Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome back to another video. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build an AR-15. And the purpose of this video is to show you that anybody can do it. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You don't have to buy a whole lot of expensive equipment. You can build an AR-15 with minimal tools, a little bit of time, and not quite as much money as you might think you need. Uh, you can very easily build this gun for under 500 bucks and have a very good functional weapon. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get the camera relocated. Let's let's look at what we've got here and let's go ahead and build an AR-15. Welcome back. So like I said in the intro, what we're going to do today is we're going to put this rifle together and we're going to show you that you can do it for under $500 and have a good quality firearm when, the, when it's all said and done. Now, don't let your friends or your buddies out there who have bought Daniel Defense or Wilson Combat or any of these other really expensive AR-15s and they spent well over $2,000 for a rifle tell you that the rifle that you're going to build because it wasn't as expensive as theirs is a bunch of crap. Uh, I say you guys can pound sand. Your $3,000 rifle can whatever. You can, you can have it. If you like spending that kind of money, that's up to you. I don't. This is actually my first AR-15. It's the first AR I ever bought, built. Uh, I bought it as a kit. I had to assemble the lower uh, as the kit, but the upper was already assembled. I bought it off of Palmetto. I've got less than $500 in the base rifle itself, not including the optic and the sights, and that gun is responsible for killing a lot of coyotes. And I've killed coyotes at ranges out to 275, 300 yards, and it has not been a problem. The gun is accurate. It always shoots, and I live in North Dakota. I've taken that gun out in 25 below, and it always runs. It's never, ever, ever failed me. These guns will run. So don't let those guys out there tell you you got to spend $2,000 on an AR-15 to get a quality rifle. I say baloney. You don't need to spend that kind of money. So with that, what have I got here? I've got a kit from K&M Tactical. I bought it off a gun broker. I've got less than $400 in the base kit itself. It cost me $390 to get it shipped to my door. And that includes everything. Bolt carrier group and the whole nine yards that's in there. With the exception of the stripped lower. This is the item that you have to run through your federally licensed dealer, your FFL dealer. This is the item that's got the serial number on it. This is the item that they cannot ship you. You need to have this shipped to an FFL dealer. This is a Palmetto lower. Uh, I bought it on the daily deal. I think it cost me $45. Uh, I was actually a three-pack. Myself and two buddies went together, and we split the cost. So this is a $45 stripped lower. So for under 500 bucks, I got enough pieces here to build a gun, not including the sights of the optics. Enough of that. Let's push the camera over to the bench here. Let's take a look at what we got. Let's talk about the tools and the kit. So uh, just just a quick apology real quick. This video is over 70 minutes long, but you have to understand too that this is a complete build from start to finish. We basically started from a completely disassembled rifle and ended up with a finished product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm in the description down below, I'm gonna put timestamps, which will put you through the various areas of the build. Uh, so if you want to skip ahead and say see the lower receiver build or see the upper receiver build or even just installing some one specific component like the uh, forward assist, uh, you'll have those timestamps in there for future reference. Just remember this is a complete video from start to finish on how to build a rifle. All right, let's talk a little bit about the tools. You don't need a lot of fancy high flute and tools to get this done. You can get this job done probably with tools you already own. Uh, you can go ahead and buy all the fancy crap if you want to, but you don't really necessarily need it. So let's just talk real quick about what we've got. Uh, I've got a hammer. This is actually a Harbor Freight hammer. It's a uh, uh, nylon and rubber hammer. Uh, you need that kind of a hammer to do some of the work. You've got a small, I've got a small ball peen hammer here. Again, I bought this at Harbor Freight. Uh, you need a, a metric Allen wrench set and probably a standard Allen wrench set. This particular kit that I've got, I only need the metrics. 
you need a flat tip screwdriver, a fairly small one. You need a fairly wide blade. Uh, I like to use a stubby screwdriver. And you need some punches. Now, this, this is a punch set that you use for putting in the, the mag catch. But you don't, need it. you don't need it. You can get away without having it, but I will tell you that is a very nice set of tools to have. And they're very inexpensive. They cost me like 10 bucks, and they were well worth it. Uh, it's for starting the roll pin. Uh, this particular one has got a magnet on the end of it, so it holds the roll pin in place. And this one you use for finishing it off and actually even removing it if you ever need to remove it. So you, that you, you don't have to have those. Your standard garden variety punch will work. You just increase the likelihood that you're going to mar up your finish a little bit, but there's ways around that that you can, you can fix that. Uh, I've got a, a wrench here that is for putting on the, uh, the buffer tube nut or the, the castle nut for the buffer tube. Again, you don't have to have this. You can very easily do this with either tighten that nut either with a punch or you can use a wooden dowel actually to get that done. You don't have to have the wrench. If you get a, an oak wooden dowel, you can tighten that nut just as easily. Uh, you need a, uh, a just this. This is a piece of a of a roll pin punch. You need that to help you start the takedown pins, and the size of that particular punch is one quarter inch. And you can actually also do the takedown pins with a quarter inch uh, clevis pin. But I I just took a quarter inch punch, and it actually broke on me. So I've been saving it, and I use that to put the takedown pins. Uh, for this particular build, you're going to need a 3 quarter inch wrench and a 5 8 inch wrench. You're also going to need a 31 millimeter crow's foot. You really can't get away with this if you want to torque these things properly. Uh, this is for torquing on the barrel nut. And in turn, you're also going to need a torque wrench to get that done. And you can go very easily to Harbor Freight. And you can pick up a half-inch drive torque wrench very inexpensively, and it's perfectly adequate for torquing on a barrel nut. Uh, barrel nuts, we're not building the space shuttle here. The torque accuracy on this thing, you want it to be reasonably accurate. And like I said, we're not building the space shuttle, so a Harbor Freight torque wrench is more than enough for what we're doing here. Uh, you need a little bit of Loctite. And you're also going to need a little bit of grease. And then this is the one tool. If, if you're going to buy a tool, this is one of the two tools that I would recommend that you absolutely should buy. This is a upper receiver block. And this block is made to hold the upper receiver in your vise. It acts as a third hand. And it also will hold the upper receiver captive while you're torquing on the barrel nut. That is very, very, very difficult to do without this and it's certainly difficult to do without this and not mar the finish the other thing i would highly recommend that you get is some kind of a block a vice block for holding the lower receiver now this one's made by wheeler uh, this is a wheeler part two actually this this upper receiver block is made by wheeler it cost me 35 dollars uh, this is made by wheeler um, you can either affix it right to the bench. I've got it set up here with a wood block so that I can actually clamp it into my vise. And what it does is your magazine well, it slide your magazine well slides over this and it holds holds your lower receiver so you can work on it. It acts again like a third hand. I really recommend you pick up some kind of a block like this. There's there's several of them out there. This is just the one that I liked and it's the one I bought. All right, let's talk about the gun parts themselves. The kit that I got off of Gunproker from K&M Tactical comes with everything you need to build this. You've got their standard upper receiver. You've got a trigger kit. You get a pistol grip. You've got the, uh, the completion kit for the upper receiver. You've got the uh, parts that you need for the barrel nut and for the handguard. You've got the buffer spring, the buffer itself, the buffer tube. Uh, I, f I opted for the fixed stock. Uh, you come with, it comes with a barrel, uh, it comes with the uh, standard A2 style bird cage, it comes with a standard non-adjustable low profile gas block, uh, the tools and the pins that you need for the gas block, it comes with a rifle length gas tube, 
charging handle, and bolt carrier group. Now the bolt carrier group we've got here, it's got a nitride finish. It's an M16 cut. Uh, this is made out of 158 carpenter steel. Uh, the bolt portion actually. The extractor is uh, 4140 steel. It's got mil spec uh, o-ring. It's got mil spec gas rings. The cam pin is also 4140. It's got 8740 uh, steel firing pin with a hard chrome finish. It's got a, it's been magnetically particle inspected and it's US made. So the upper receiver itself, this is your standard upper receiver. It is not billet. Uh, it's got a forward assist on it. Uh, it's just your basic garden variety upper receiver. Uh, we've got a, a 19 inch M-lock rail here. This is a 20 inch barrel. Uh, it's a 5.56. It's a one in seven twist. You can see right there. Uh, 5.56 NATO and this is a heavy barrel they've got it in a heavy profile and there is some it is pretty weighty uh, the barrel itself is 4150 chromoly vanadium rifle barrel uh, it's got a rifle length gas system uh, and the whole kit comes with the standard style charging handle and lower parts kit so not a bad quality kit uh, it's it certainly isn't the highest quality but it's not a bad quality kit and you know what at the end of the day what it really boils down to is when we get this thing put together does it shoot so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's start putting this thing together okay so let's let's build the upper receiver first I'm gonna put my upper receiver into my receiver block here and you can see it holds everything really nice and captive and then you just put this this whole block in your vise and you just clamp it down Make sure you leave it stick out just a little bit so you can re reach everything. Put a good bit of pretty 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 good bit of pressure on that, and it's going to hold your upper receiver, and it's not going to crush it, it's not going to wreck it, it's not going to hurt it in any way, shape, or form. So now what we've got to do is we we're basically the first thing I like to do is I like to install the barrel. So one of the first things we need to do on this barrel, make sure everything is clean, make sure there's no debris or anything in here, and then I like to take just a little bit of grease and I like to put just a little bit of grease on the barrel extension here that goes into the receiver it doesn't have to be heavy and it doesn't have to be a lot and then you go ahead and it's a very simple matter of just go ahead and pushing this barrel in and it's going to be tight and it's going to be snug and this one's actually really nice fit it fits really really well now on this particular rifle like I said this is a railed upper and what that basically means is that it's it's got a it's got a barrel nut designed to accept this type of a railed upper uh, handguard. So once you've got the barrel pushed in there, you take the barrel nut, which is what this part is, go ahead and slide it over, and you spin it on. So here again, I like to take just a little bit of grease. I like to put just a little grease on the threads doesn't need to be a lot just just enough to get a little bit of lube on there that way over the course of time if you ever need to change the barrel or whatever it's not completely stuck on there so go ahead and screw that barrel nut on there just hand tight for right now doesn't have to be anything anything crazy this is this is where you need your crow's foot and your torque wrench so you need to torque this on now they always recommend that you never you never torque these things to more than 80 foot pounds I didn't get any instructions with this so I am not going to I don't have torques that they recommend for this particular for this particular uh, kit so I'm gonna run my torque wrench up to 50 pounds I'm going to lock it in. Put my crow's foot on it. I'm going to install my torque wrench 90 degrees to the to the crow's foot and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to torque it to 50 pounds. There it is, click. So now I'm going to tip, remove my torque wrench and I'm going to put on a breaker bar because I never untorque with a torque wrench and I'm going to back the barrel nut off. Remove my breaker bar. I'm going to reinstall my torque wrench. And 
and I'm going to retorque the barrel nut. 50 pounds. Now I'm going to take my torque wrench off and I'm going to bump my torque wrench up to 65 pounds and that's where I'm going to finish off my torque. 65. 65 pounds. There it is. My barrel nut is torqued. All right, now that we've got the barrel nut torqued, we have to verify that the handguard, that the holes for installing the handguard line up with the barrel nut. So we go ahead and take and slide the, the handguard on, and we line everything up with the Picatinny rail on the receiver. And then we have to actually physically look here, and you can see the holes don't line up. So the only way the holes line up is if you can't the handguard. Well, obviously we can't have that. We want the handguard to be straight. So what do we do to fix that? We can do one of two things. We can either continue to torque to further advance the barrel nut, but I don't, we're, sh we're only showing half a hole and the hole is already on the top side. So we're gonna have to put some shims in there. Now with the kit, they give you a couple of shims. So that's, they expect things like this and they, they equip you to fix those. So let's go ahead and let's, we have to back that barrel nut back off again, install one shim, and then see what happens. And then see what happens with the uh, alignment for the barrel shroud. We're gonna go ahead and install a shim. Screw the barrel nut back on. Retorque it. Install the shroud. Line everything back up on the Picatinny. Not quite, we need to put one more shim in there. The first shim came out with the barrel nut that's still in there, which is just fine. And retorque it. It's torqued. Line everything up on the Picatinny. And the screw holes line up. At least they line up good enough to go ahead and install the handguard. But first, we have to install the gas block. So this is your gas block, this is your gas tube, and these are the tools you get with the kit to install, install your gas block. So the first thing I like to do is I like to actually install the gas tube into the gas block. Now you can buy a really fancy tool that holds the gas block in place nice and nice and solid and then allows you to put the the gas tube in and then it gives you a surface to sit here and drive the pin in I made my own this is just a piece of three and a half by three and a half inch oak I drilled a one eighth inch hole dead down the middle of it sawed it completely in half knocked off a little extra eighth of an inch on this side and radius the edge and you can see my gas block sits in there just nice. And you know what it cost me? Nothing, because I had this block of oak laying around. You can easily build one of these yourself to do exactly this job. So you've got your gas tube here, and the thing you need to note about your gas tube is you can see it's bent. And what needs to happen is the gas tube actually needs to, from where it goes into the upper receiver, to where it goes into the gas block, it needs to drop. So you need to orient your gas tube correctly so that it actually drops when it comes out of the lower receiver. So very, very simply, all you do is insert the gas tube, is correct, or, oriented correctly, into the gas block until you can see right there in that hole where everything lines up to include this hole right here. 
And there it is. You can, see, you can see through the hole there, and you know your gas block is lined up correctly. Set it in here. Here's a tool I forgot to mention that you need. You're going to need a needle nose pliers. Uh, if you've got big old fat meat hooks like I do, uh, you're not going to be able to hold most of these roll pins. You take a roll pin, put it in your needle nose pliers, set it in the hole for the gas block, take your hammer, get it started. Once it's started, go ahead and don't punch it all the way through and then you can tell by giving the gas tube a little bit of a wiggle if everything is lined up and it is I can I can feel that the gas tube is already in there if it's not lining up like that you need to pull that pin back out just a little bit to get everything lined back up and then go ahead and finish off the gas block or the pin don't go crazy when you're pounding on this because you don't want to mushroom the top of that pin then you just take your punch Go ahead and finish it off. Now when you're all said and done, that pin should not, you shouldn't catch it with your finger and it shouldn't be poking out the other side. So it, that's it, that's installed. That gas tube is in place. Go ahead and take your, take your block out of your vise and flip it over. and just clamp it back into your vise like this. It doesn't need to be tight because the, you need to see that little dimple right there, okay? Then you take your gas tube, you slide it over the barrel, you line it up with the hole on the bottom of the lower receiver right there, slide your gas tube into place, line it up with that hole and slide it in all the way until it contacts this shoulder just like that. Now you notice that there was a dimple in that barrel. That dimple is actually for these set screws. So what I like to do is I like to put my wrench in here, just start snugging down my set screw. Don't get it tight, you just want it snug. And then you can wiggle this around and you can feel when that set screw goes into that dimple. Okay, it's in there. I'm not tightening it or anything, it's just in there. Okay. And then you can back this set screw out completely. Put just a little bit of blue Loctite on here. You don't need a lot. And reinstall that set screw. Until it contacts the barrel and then snug it up. Okay, that one's snug. Now I back this set screw out again. A little bit of blue Loctite. Reinstall it. And torque it down. Double check the other one, make sure it's tight. Triple check this one, and they're all tight. Take a rag, wipe off the excess blue Loctite, and your gas block is installed. All right, now that the gas block is installed, we can go ahead and install the shroud or the barrel shroud. So it's just a matter of sliding it on there, pushing it on, laying it up with the Picatinny on the, on the receiver. And they give you these screws, which go into these holes to lock the handguard down.
So there's no real great mystery to the muzzle device here. Uh, it's, it's relatively simple to do. Again, I like to take just a little bit of grease, put the, put the crush washer on there, put a little bit of grease on the threads, spin the muzzle device on, Just a little more to get that middle slot clocked correctly. One more just a little torque. Now I'm using a three quarter inch open end wrench here. And the muzzle device is installed. All right, the forward assist is actually relatively easy to install. You've got the, the forward assist and the spring and you've also got the roll pin needed to install it. So you just take the forward assist, put the spring on it, and you can see there's a notch right there. That's where the roll pin has to go. So you have to make sure that you orient the notch to the inside this way. Take a small eighth punch, push that in all the way. Then I take my roll pin. This is where this tool comes in really nice. I can stick my roll pin in here and it actually holds the roll pin. Then I can stick it in here, grab my hammer, and drive it home. You want that roll pin just barely below the surface and then when you feel under here on the bottom side it doesn't stick out so it should be just under the surface on both sides. Now the final thing that we have left to do on this upper is to install the dust cover. All right to install the dust cover it's nothing real difficult. You see right there's the groove for the circlip. It's got to go to this side. So you start the pin Install the dust cover on the pin and push the pin through until it just pokes through the window right there. Then you take your spring, long leg of the spring goes towards the front of the gun. The short leg of the spring goes to the rear. You put the spring on with the short leg to the rear, push it about halfway through, and then you can take and turn this spring, the long leg, clockwise. And it's kind of a finger fumble to do this, but it can be done. So there you can see the, the long leg is right there and the short leg is there. And then you just finish pushing the, the pin the rest of the way through until it pokes through the other side. Now you need to take that tiny ass circlip right there, get yourself a needle nose because there's no way you're going to do this without a needle nose pliers, and push that circlip onto that groove. And you can pretty much just push it on with your thumb and then if you need to you can just finish it off with the tip of a screwdriver but there it is installed. So there you've just completed the assembly of your upper receiver. Wasn't that horribly difficult to do? Now all you have to do is put the charging handle into place, slide the bolt in place, make sure everything lines up, and your upper receiver is completely assembled and ready to go. Now we can set this off to the side, and we can begin assembly of the lower. All right, lower assembly receiver or lower receiver assembly is not difficult to do. It's actually fairly simple, and this is where 
this is where this block comes in extremely handy. Uh, I really highly recommend that you get one of these blocks. Uh, it just makes the whole process so much easier to deal with and, and do. So let's do let's do the first thing. Let's uh, let's get the takedown pin on the front side installed. All right, your takedown pins. You have two of them. You have a front takedown pin and a rear takedown pin. They both use the same detents. They both use the same screws. The pins are definitely different. The long one is the pin that goes towards the front of the gun, and the rear one is the pin, or the short one, is the one that goes to the rear of the gun. So since we're doing the, long, the front one first, we'll put the short one aside. We need one spring and one detent. So the first thing you're going to need for this whole thing is you're going to need... A quarter inch shaft or rod uh, a clevis pin works for this as well and you go ahead and you just put this quarter inch rod in here like it was the takedown pin all right now the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a pair of safety glasses because we're dealing with springs and pressure here and I'm here to tell you these little detents are like bullets when they come flying out of there if they come flying out so I would highly recommend safety glasses to protect your eyes so you go ahead and you stick one of the takedown springs in here as such then with your needle nose pliers you go ahead and you grab one of the detents like so and you start it in the hole and then you take a flat tip screwdriver and go ahead and just push it in and this is this is the part that's a little little hairy and a little precarious because now you've got spring pressure on that detent and then you go ahead and just push that rod out of the, in there and then you can remove the screwdriver and that rod now is holding the detent in place now this is the part where you could have a spring go flying as well you take your takedown pin and now you've got a at the same time you pull this shaft out, you've got to be pushing this detent or this takedown pin in and catching the detent at the same time. So I take my finger and I put it on the back side and I also put it on the back side of that rod. That way I got a good hold of it and I slowly push the pin in while I'm pulling the rod out. And now I've got the pin actually in the hole so I can remove that rod completely. And listen, now you can hear that that detent is in the takedown pin. It's in the groove on the back side. And now my takedown pin is installed. So the next thing I like to install is the magazine release. So there's three parts to the magazine release. There's the, there's the button, the spring, and then the actual catch itself. Those are the three parts that you're going to need. So to install the magazine release, uh, you don't need to have it in the block. It's pretty simple. You take the catch, and this is the slot that the catch fits into, and you place the bolt portion of the catch into the slot, and you push it home. Then you just got to hold it in there with your finger. Then take the spring, slide the print spring over the bolt. Then you take the actual button itself. Now the button on one side should be textured. The textured side goes out, and you literally... Just push down on the spring and thread the button onto the bolt. Once you get it started, it's going to get to a point where you can't thread it on anymore. You take and you push the button in as far as you can. And then literally just turn the catch as if it was a bolt. And you want to turn that catch enough times so that the bolt or the threaded portion is actually flush with the button. Now you're not going to be able to do that without a little help. So I grab my punch and I can, you can actually push that button in further than it needs to be and go ahead and thread that on further. Get it in the slot. Check it. I'm actually a little too far. You can see there. The bolt is just, it's a little bit proud of the button, so I got to back it off one turn. Perfect. Magazine catch is installed. 
So the neat thing about these blocks is now that the magazine catch is installed, when you push it on there, it actually locks into place and the magazine catch is holding it. So now it secures it onto that. So now the next thing that we can install is we can go ahead and install the safety in the trigger. Okay, the safety in the trigger you can install in pretty much any order that you want to. Uh, some guys like to install the safety first. Some guys like to install the trigger first. It's really kind of a personal preference thing, if you will. Uh, if you're going to install the safety first, you also have to install the pistol grip at the same time because the pistol grip is on the bottom side of the pistol grip here is where the spring is to install the safety to capture the safety into the receiver. So let's go ahead and install the safety in the pistol grip first. I'm going to take and I'm going to orient my my block as such and you can see right there on the back on the bottom side where the pistol grip installs there's a hole right there that's where the detent and the spring goes for the safety so it's it's actually quite simple you just you take the safety itself the safety lever and you put it into the hole very simple not much to it I always orient the safety lever up that's just a personal preference for me this detent here is the detent for the safety and you can see it's got a little bit of a little bit of an lip there and a flat spot on the back side that is the safety detent that goes into that hole first then you've got the spring for the safety detent and you have the pistol grip for this for which has a hole in it for the spring so you just go ahead and set the spring in there as such so you can see there's the hole where the detent is at. I have the pistol grip with my spring in it. I go ahead and just set the pistol grip in here, being very careful not to tip that spring out. Get the spring lined up with the hole and push the whole assembly forward. Now the spring is pushing on that detent. And at this point, you can go ahead and operate the safety and you should be able to feel the detents on the safety, and I can. Now I can go ahead and take my pistol grip screw, screw set it on the end of my Allen wrench, snake it down into the hole and tighten it up. It's tight all it needs to be okay now let's do the trigger so the trigger consists of these parts here you've got your two trigger pins you have your your hammer and your hammer spring you have your trigger you have your trigger reset spring your trigger tension spring and your trigger reset catch those are the parts that you need and there's some things that we got it we can do before we even start putting the trigger in. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to install the trigger, the trigger spring onto the trigger first. The way this goes is the trigger spring basically has to go on oriented like this. So I just push it on there like that and then I just take and pull that loop over the dog right here on the trigger and do the same thing on the other side. Now your trigger spring is installed. The hammer spring is slightly different but still the same kind of principle. You got two loops, those loops go over these dogs like this and the orientation of the hammer spring is as such and that's what makes your, that's the, the way your hammer spring is oriented on the hammer itself. Now you've got to install the, or at least partially install the reset. I don't actually install the reset until I start putting the trigger into the, into the lower receiver, but I do install the trigger reset spring. Now you can see on that spring, there's a fat spot on it. That fat spot actually goes down. You can see right there on that trigger, there's actually kind of a little dent in there. That fat spot goes in the dent to give friction so that that spring stays in place. And you just push that in there as such. That's where it sits. 
then when you put when you do finally put the trigger together the whole assembly is going to look like this and then that trigger pin is going to go through this the reset and the receiver to hold everything in place but I put this in later so the first thing I install is the the trigger itself so the you have to have the weapon safety on the fire position to do this first off so turn the safety to the fire position then you literally just set the trigger down into the slot and push it underneath the safety and then you can see how easily everything just fits in there nice then I take the trigger reset and I go ahead and I set the trigger reset into place like this then I take a 5 30 second roll pin punch and I use that as a temporary pin to get everything lined up so what you have to do is you have to take the trigger and the reset and everything and get it all nice and lined up on the hole of the receiver and then go ahead and I use the the punch as a temporary pin and I've got that punch slightly tapered so that it kind of finds the holes as you're pushing it in if you will and everything just lines up really nice okay everything's in there as it should so now the trigger is actually functioning as if it as if it was installed now you can take your trigger pin, slowly start to pull the punch out and install the pin in its place. You kind of got to wiggle everything around, but you should be able to get it in there with your fingers and there it is. Mine is installed. All right, now it's time to install the hammer. And this one's a little tricky. So you've got these two legs on the hammer spring and those two legs have actually got to sit on top of the trigger pin. And then you have to push and turn the hammer down so that everything lines up with the holes on the side of the receiver. Again, I'm gonna use my punch to get everything lined up and in the holes. So there I've got my punch in place. Now I take the last pin and I basically feed it the same way I just did for the trigger pin. Now this pin is generally a little tighter just because of the spring pressure it's under. So I go ahead and then I just take a hammer and I go ahead and lightly lightly tap that pin into place and then just finish it off everything works as it should my trigger is installed and it's functioning Okay, now we can go ahead and install the trigger guard. And one of the things that you need to understand about the trigger guard is you have to be a little gentle with it. And you have to be gentle with it because these ears are not real thick and they will break if you overdo it. If everything isn't going smooth and happy and good, stop and start over because you can break those. And you really do need to support this ear on something. And we'll show you how to do that here in a second. So this kind of trigger guard... It's actually got a spring detent on it. That spring detent goes to the front, and you can see there's a little hole in there. Very, very simple process of just pushing down that detent and sliding the trigger guard into place. And then it's all set and ready to be ready to have the, uh, the roll pin driven into place. So now you have to drive in that roll pin. And like I said, we have to kind of support those ears. So I just grab a block of wood is all I do. Support the, 
support the lower on the block of wood just as so. Then you can take your roll pin, start it in the hole, and you, you're going to need to pound it from day or from moment one. So you need your little hammer. Get it started and be very gentle with it and just take your time. And as you're pounding it, you'll, you'll eventually feel it catch and, and grab the trigger guard. So now if I stop there and I, I can feel that the, the roll pin has started in the trigger guard, now I can send it the rest of the way home again. Just take your time. Now that roll pin is flush or a little better than flush and it's a little better than flush on this side. All right, we're almost done. So uh, the next thing I like to install is I like to install the bolt catch. These are the parts that you need for the bolt catch. Uh, you have the bolt catch itself, you have the roll pin, you have the, uh, the, 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 the push pin for it and the spring. This is where this punch set really comes in nice. This punch set is specifically designed for installing this magazine or this bolt catch. And why it's specifically designed to do that, the, the punches themselves are the right length and they've got a cutout on the side there you can see which accommodates the receiver. This particular punch has got a hole in the end of it and buried in there is a magnet which actually will hold the roll pin while you're trying to install it. And then this punch is just a rounded tip and it's just made for sending it home the rest of the way and actually you can use it to remove the pins as well. So this is really a nice set. Now you don't need to have it. You don't absolutely have to have it. You can do, you can use just a piece, regular piece of punch, but you have to take an additional step to use that and I'll show you what that is right now. All right, so this is where your bolt catch gets installed here and this is the side that you have to drive in that roll pin. Uh, if you're gonna use just a regular punch, you're gonna wanna really tape up the side of this receiver really, really well so that while you're hammering or pounding that pin in, uh, you don't take a chance at marring up the surface. Because without that set of punches, you're gonna have to hold that pin with a needle nose pliers, and then you're gonna have to hit it directly with the hammer. You're not gonna be able to use a punch unless you get a roll pin punch, uh, then you can get away with it. But otherwise, you're going to want to really tape up the side of this receiver just to make sure that you don't mar it up. Now, I'm going to use the pins that are the punches that I have because I have them. So why wouldn't I? So I've got my roll pin and it's it's in my punch like this. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to set it in there like it like it's supposed to be. Get it all lined up, and then I've literally got that cutout portion of the of the punch resting up against the lower. And then it's just a matter of go ahead and starting to tap it into place. Now don't go too far. So I've got the roll pin started. Now I install the, print, the spring and the push pin. Then I install the bolt catch. Using the same punch, I go ahead and start sending it the rest of the way home. Now if it stops, you don't have the hole lined up here. But mine didn't stop, so I got lucky on the first shot, hole in one, and my my bolt catch is operating as it should. So that's as far as that punch can take me. I can't finish it off with that. I need the other punch now to go ahead and just set it on there and finish it off. I'm not hitting hard. I'm just lightly tapping and it's going in very easily. There it is. Bolt catch works and operates freely as it should, and it is installed. 
All right, the final thing that we need to install is the, uh, the buffer tube and the rear takedown pin. And of course the butt stock itself, but that's, that's easy to do. So first thing we need to do is we need to take the, the rear takedown pin and just stick it in the hole like it's supposed to be. It doesn't have to be in there all the way. Then I take the detent and that detent goes in this hole. Then I take the detent spring and I push the detent down in the hole. And then I put a little bit of pressure on it and I turn the takedown pin until I feel that it's, it's grabbed the detent and the detent is in the groove and it's there. So now I can go ahead and remove the, remove the detent spring. Okay, now to install the buffer tube, we also have to put in the buffer catch. So there's a spring for the buffer catch. It goes in the hole there. Then you have the actual buffer catch itself. It goes right on top of the spring and it should go up and down in that hole nice and freely. Then we take our buffer tube and we start threading the buffer tube onto the back of the receiver. And then as we're screwing the buffer tube onto the receiver, we have to push the buffer catch down and continue to thread the tube on. And when the tube bottoms out, at least on this particular type of buffer tube, when the tube bottoms out, that spring should still operate freely, and it does. So on this style of buffer tube, all you have to do at this point is tighten it up. And it's a 5 8 inch wrench. Just put the wrench on there and give it a, give it a tighten and it's tight. And now that the buffer tube is tight, we got to go ahead and put the buffer tube spacer on there because that is necessary for installing the buttstock. At this point now, I go ahead and I install the detent spring into the hole right where it's supposed to be. Now we have to install the buttstock and it's very on this type of model, it's very simple. You just slide the buttstock over the buffer tube and then we're going to stop short and you can see that the detent spring is sticking out there. Now when you push this buttstock on, you have to push it on straight and there's a, there's a, a nipple sticking out there and there's a receiver for the nipple that's on the back side of the lower receiver. So we gotta push everything on there straight so that spring compresses straight into the hole. Give it a little bit of a wiggle to find the Find the detent, there it is. Finish it off and push it home. And now we have to take the screw and install the screw and screw it into the back of the buffer tube. Give it a good torque, it's good and torqued. I always like to make sure that this one's still tight and it is, and there it is. You have just built a lower receiver. Now we can put the rest of the gun together and verify that everything works. First we have to install the buffer spring. Then we have to install the buffer tube, or the buffer itself, excuse me. Buffer stays into place. Then we can take our completed upper, put the pivot pin through the front hole of your completed upper and push it in. You're going to have to take you're going to have to take the gun off of your off your AR block and lift it up just a little bit. Close up the close up the two halves and push the rear pin home and you are complete. Now let's do a function check. All right, we've completed our build. Let's go ahead and do a function test. The first thing is you make sure your weapon is on safe. Make sure that it is clear of ammunition. We have no ammunition in the firearm. In fact, we don't even have any ammunition in the vicinity of the firearm. We are completely safe. First thing to do is to have your weapon on safe. Squeeze the trigger. Nothing happens. Place the weapon to the fire position. Squeeze the trigger. You hear, you hear the hammer fall. Go ahead and charge the weapon. 
Squeeze the trigger and hold the trigger back. Do not release the trigger. Squeeze it and hold it. Charge the weapon while you're holding the trigger back. Release it. You should hear an audible click. There it is. There's the click. Fire or squeeze the trigger. You should hear it shoot again. And it does. Go ahead and charge the weapon. Place the weapon back on safe. Now, empty magazine. No rounds in the mag. Go ahead and place the magazine into the firearm. Slap it home. It's good. Pull the charging handle back. Release it. The bolt should stay open. And it does. Go ahead and slap the bolt release. The bolt should drop. And it does. Push the mag drop button. The mag should come out on its own without you helping it. And it does. You have just completed a function check on your brand new AR-15. And that completes it. Uh, that's the build for the uh, K&M Tactical 20-inch marksman upper receiver and lower. Uh, first impressions of it. Everything fit together really well. I was very happy with the fit. I had no real issues putting it together. Everything went together as smoothly as one could hope for. Uh, the quality of the gun itself, uh, I really can't complain about it. It's the... The forward handguard is, it's got a lot of, a lot of M-lock slots in it, but you know what, that is what it is, and we need to ventilate these barrels, so I guess that's all right. The one thing I don't like about it is when I, when I charge the weapon, the handguard rings. It makes a, makes a ringing noise. You know, if you've got your hand on it, the ringing goes away, so... Unless you have your hand guard on or your hand on the hand guard, it will ring when you charge the weapon. I've never had one do that before, so I guess so be it. If it does it, it does it. Uh, I really like the A2 style buttstock. Um, really enjoy that. Uh, I had that when I was in the military, and I liked it there, and I like it here. I, I like the way the A2 style fits up. And the beauty of it is, is there's no, there's no pinch points to get my beard hairs caught in the stock. So that, that's one of the reasons I bought this. The other reason I bought this is because it's got a full 20 inch barrel on it. I'm, I'm really down with that. I really like the 20 inch barrel. It's a heavy barrel. Uh, when you go onto the uh, K&M Tactical website, they say MOA guarantee. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean actual MOA less than one inch at 100 yards or is it military MOA which is basically minute of man at 300 so I guess we'll find out I'll, I'll take it to the range and probably I'll do another video or a follow-up video to uh, let you know how the gun shoots but as it stands right now I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it went together I'm pretty happy with the quality of it if it shoots as good as the quality of the the build went I think I'm going to be pretty happy. So the only thing I've got left to do is I've got to mount a scope onto it, uh, pick up some ammo, take it to the range, see what ammo it likes the best, and just shoot the darn thing and see how it goes. So with that, uh, first impressions of the rifle are actually pretty good. Uh, there is one more thing that I'm going to install on this, and I'm going to put some uh, I'm going to put some uh, Magpul plastic covers on here. Uh, you can buy these. It's a package of six, and they're just little covers that snap right into the M-Lock slots. In fact, I'll probably do that next on the video. But as it stands right now, I'm not disappointed with it. Uh, the bolt carrier group seems like it's a fairly decent quality bolt carrier group. Uh, I don't see any problems with it. The fit and the finish looks pretty good. They, uh, they did stake the keyway, which is nice. The... Uh, the bolt does slide in and out as it should with very little effort, so everything works well there. Uh, it's your standard garden variety charging handle. Nothing special about that. I have not taken the gold bolt carrier group apart to see if the gas rings are lined up or not. Uh, I will obviously do that before I go to the range. But overall, for what, it's, for what it is, it's a $450 rifle. I'm pretty happy with it. If it shoots... I'll be elated, and we'll, we'll, we'll cover that on the next video. 
So let's go ahead and let's bring the camera back over here. I'm going to show you the covers that I'm going to install on this and how those install. Uh, they've also got a couple of M-Lock rails that I'm going to install on it. I'm going to put one under here for sure for a bipod because if this gun shoots, it's actually going to probably end up being relegated to my to being my coyote rifle uh, just because I'm going to give it a shot. If it shoots, it shoots. Uh, that gun has done me really, really well coyote hunting, but the only gripe I don't like about it is that the fact that the stock has got the, uh, the adjustable stock on it and it catches my hairs on my on my beard. And I don't want to change the buffer tube, the buffer spring, the buffer, and the buttstock on it to make a setup like this. And I had another excuse to buy another rifle because we always need one of those. So let's go ahead and let's put some of these covers on so I can show you how they work. And uh, let's continue on. All right, so the other thing I'm going to install is a bunch of these rail covers. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to put 8,000 attachments on his AR. I mean, I'm, I feel the, I do not feel the need to put a flashlight on this or anything else. The only thing I really need is that pick rail for a bipod. And I love these Magpul uh, rail covers, Type 2 rail covers, because one, they're super easy to install. Two, they put a little more girth on the, on the rail or on the handguard, which better fits my big hands. And three, they're textured and they give you a little bit of grip. So to show you how easy these things are to install, you've got your M-Lock slots here. You just go ahead and put one on there and then you just take the insert push it down in there and it's done and you can do that all the way up and down the whole rifle you can checkerboard them you can get them in different colors they come in black uh, uh, dark earth they come in gray uh, tan they come in all kinds of colors so you can do whatever you want i just like the function of them so let's go ahead and uh, let's install the rest of them get this thing filled in One more check that you really should do anytime you build a new rifle, and this, this just should go without saying, but I'll say it. You need to, you need to check the head spacing of the gun to make sure that the gun is head spaced correctly. Now, I have never had an AR that didn't head space correctly after I put it together, but it, it, uh, you always should check it. So I've got a set of uh, go no go gauges here. Uh, this is the go gauge. So when I stick this in the chamber, which is inherently tricky to do. You stick that in the chamber. The bolt should close, and it does. This bolt closes completely, and it will go ahead and eject the gauge. Go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear. Now I'll take the no-go gauge, and I'll put the no-go gauge in the chamber, and it should not close. And do not slam it shut, because if you slam it shut, it's going to stick it in the chamber and you're going to wreck your gauge. But you should, you should let it fall with enough force and then run the forward assist, and it will not close. So the chamber is, it, the go-no-go, -no -go, the no-go gauge is not fitting in the chamber. That means that your gun is headspaced correctly. And to get that gauge out, just have to give it a little butt bump and it falls out. So we have headspace the gun. You should always headspace a gun, even an AR. Even though if it's mil spec, everything should fit together correctly, but it's always a good idea to headspace them just to verify that everything's in, in there correctly. And this gun headspaces just as it should. All right, so there it is. K&M Tactical 20-inch Marksman uh, AR build. Can't say I'm disappointed with it. Hopefully uh, it shoots as good as it went together. It went together really, really easy. Very happy with how it went together. And if it shoots half as good, I'm going to be tickled pink. So the next, I think I'll do another video on it once I get a scope on it and I get it to the range. We'll get some different ammo. We'll send some different ammo through it. We'll do a bit of a break in on it and see how this thing shoots. And if it shoots and runs and it doesn't have any problems, 
great uh, sub four hundred dollar rifle, and we're we're rocking and rolling. So, like I said, I paid for the kit. I paid three hundred and ninety dollars. That was including shipping off of Gun Broker. Uh, the lower receiver, the strip lower receiver, came from Palmetto. That was forty five dollars. The whole kit went together fairly easy uh, to include the filming and the moving the camera around and all that kind of business. Uh, took me about three hours to put this thing together, but doing all the video, videography and everything, uh, that extends the time enormously. We'll see how she runs. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and thank you for all my subscribers and my longtime subscribers. If you like this kind of content, if you like what I'm providing out here, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you ding that notification bell so that you get notified when I have more upcoming videos. And I just really appreciate all my subscribers. I don't have a Patreon. I don't ask for money. And I never will ask you for money. I do everything for the subscribers and for the watch or for the viewers. So uh, I did not get sent this rifle by k and Tactical. I bought this with my own cash. So I've got no allegiances or alliances to k and Tactical. This is my honest review. If I get it to the range and I can't get this thing to group with no matter what kind of ammo I put into it, I'm going to let you know. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think of it. So far, pretty happy. Went together easy. All the, all the parts fit like they should. Don't have any problems. Shipping out of K&M Tactical was lightning fast. Uh, I paid for it, I believe, on a Friday, and I had it by Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, it showed up. So less than a week, it showed up at my door. So very, very happy with the customer service of K&M Tactical. Happy with the guns so far. Now let's just go see if it shoots. As always, thank you for stopping by. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades, and we will see you on the next video.